Now let's see adiabatic phase damping in the longitudinal phase space. Now if acceleration rate is very small, that means beta and gamma can be taken as almost constant. They are very, uh, they are varying very slowly. The parameters of the phase space ellipse for small oscillations they vary slowly. The area of the ellipse describing the small amplitude oscillations is then an adiabatic invariant during the acceleration process. Okay, so this is for only when the acceleration rate is small. <clears throat> so from the equation of ellipse, so this is the equation of ellipse, we can write this and now since the area of the ellipse is constant, so we can write pi into w0 square into delta phi0 is equal to constant. Okay, or we can write pi uh, w0 delta phi0 is equal to a constant. So we can substitute this values here and this we get this term is equal to a constant. So from here we can write for phi 0, delta phi 0, this is constant times uh, this term in the denominator. Now we see that in this all the terms in the denominator are constant except for beta and gamma which are varying slowly because acceleration rate is small. So, if E0 and phi s are fixed, we get delta phi 0 is equal to some constant <coughs> divided by beta s gamma s to the power of 3 by 4. Also now, the phase space area is uh, an adiabatic invariant. So, it is a constant. So, from the above equation and from this, because the phase space area is an adiabatic invariant, we can write W0 is equal to constant times beta gamma to the power of 3 by 4. So we have now the phase is uh, delta phi 0 is inversely proportional to beta s gamma s to, uh, to the power of 3 by 4 whereas w0 is directly proportional to beta s gamma s to the power of 3 by 4. So this means that, so this results they describe a decrease of the phase amplitude. So the phase amplitude decreases as uh, the acceleration happens or the energy increases and an increase of the energy amplitude. The energy amplitude increases as the beam is getting accelerated. So uh, increase of the energy amplitude of phase oscillations during acceleration in a linear. So this effect is known as phase damping because the phase is decreasing. So this is known as phase damping. The area remains constant because it is an adiabatic so let's say we have an initial amplitude of phi 0i and uh, when the and the synchronous velocity at that instant of time is beta si and at some point of time later the phase amplitude is phi 0 and the synchronous velocity is beta s. So then we can write uh, from the previous results we can write delta phi 0 upon delta phi 0i is equal to beta s gamma s i by beta s gamma s to the power of 3 by 4. Okay, So there is an inverse relationship here. There is an inverse relationship here. So we see that the phase is getting damped. So this is at the initial location and this is after acceleration. So beta 2 is greater than beta 1. So after acceleration, we see that the phase width has decreased. Now similarly, the energy width scales as, so delta W0 by delta W0i is equal to beta s gamma s divided by beta s gamma s i to the power of 3 by 4. So there is a direct relationship here. So as the acceleration happens, so as we go from here to here, the energy half width increases. Okay, so the phase half width or the phase width is decreasing. And the energy width is increasing. The area of both the ellipse will remain same. And remember, this holds when the acceleration rate is small. So phase damping of the beam in longitudinal direction caused by beam acceleration is shown here. The phase width of the beam decreases <coughs> and the energy width increases. The total area remains constant in this process. Okay, so coming back again to the comparison between proton and electron which we have seen in the very first lecture. So we see that even at very low values of kinetic energy, so uh, let us say at a few MeV, the electron becomes relativistic. So its velocity becomes constant. So as the kinetic energy increases, 
the mass is increasing. So here the velocity has become constant. Whereas for the proton, since its mass is much more than that of the electron, it, uh, this happens at a much higher value of energy. So uh, since electrons become relativistic at low energies, the velocity of electrons becomes constant at these low energies. So energy is increasing for the electron but velocity is not increasing because velocity has almost uh, is, uh, be become equal to the velocity of light. Now relativistic electrons do not have the problem of phase stability. So why is this problem of phase stability coming? Because different particles see different values of the electric field and they get different energies and with because they are getting different energies their velocities are different. But for electrons which are already relativistic even though the uh, energy gain is different, they will still move with the same velocity. So, relativistic electrons do not have the problem of phase stability since the velocity of the electron does not change with the kinetic energy. Also, the cell length of the electron lenats does not change with energy. So, as we have seen before, the cell lengths uh, are kept constant for a electron Lenach. So it is either beta lambda or beta lambda by 2 depending on whether it is a zero mode structure or a high mode structure. So now let us see the longitudinal dynamics of low energy beams injected into a V is equal to C Lenach. So electron Lenachs are generally known as V is equal to C Lenachs because they are designed such that uh, uh, the, that the velocity of the electron has become constant. So the cell length has become constant. Beta lambda or beta lambda by 2 has become constant. So for the electrons, the cell length is constant. Now uh, low energy electrons, let us say typically at 450 keV. So, so they have become relativistic at a few MeV. At in this region, let us say 50 keV, 100 keV and so on, they are still non-relativistic. So, but you would like to inject them in the same Lenach, in the same V is C, equal to C Lenach because uh, it saves cost. So, low energy electrons are typically injected into a Lenach with velocity nearly half the speed of light. So, if you see the beta for 50 keV electron, it is 0.412. So, this is, uh, the electron here is non-relativistic. But you would like to inject this into the same V is equal to C accelerating structure. So it is attractive to use the same accelerating structure that is used for acceleration of extremely relativistic electrons for the lowest energy electrons because it saves cost. Otherwise you will have to design two Lenachs, one for the lower energy uh, electrons, the non-relativistic electrons and the other one for the high energy relativistic electrons. But since now the uh, at low energies the electrons are non-relativistic so in this case what will happen the particle phases will slip on the wave. So as we have seen earlier that if the particle is non-relativistic and you uh, inject it uh, if you inject it into the Lenach so the phase will slip. So now we will discuss here the capture, bunching and acceleration of an initial V is equal V less than C electron beam in a V is equal to C traveling wave structure. So we have a V is equal to C traveling wave structure. So what is a traveling wave structure? It is a periodically loaded waveguide. So if you recall the previous uh, one of the previous lectures we have studied about traveling wave structures. So we saw that the hollow waveguide cannot be used for acceleration because there the phase velocity is greater than the velocity of light. So it will be difficult to synchronize any particle with the uh, wave because no particle can move with a velocity greater than the velocity of light. So these waveguide structures are loaded periodically to slow down the phase velocity. So once you get a phase velocity equal to the velocity of the electrons which is very close to the velocity of light, then uh, this can be used for acceleration. So these are basically periodically loaded uh, structures. So in this uh, structure, we try to put in an initial electron, uh, which has initially which has a velocity less than the velocity of light. Eventually, it will uh, gain energy and its velocity will become almost equal to the velocity of light. 
so now equation of motion of a particle with position z at time t accelerated by a traveling wave with longitudinal electric field amplitude e0 is so this is the energy gain so this is simply rate of change of uh, momentum and this is the energy gain so q e0 cos phi as a function of z and t so where the phase of the traveling wave with velocity approximately equal to c as a function of uh, as a function of z and t and this phi can be written as omega t minus 2 pi z by lambda so we can differentiate this we get d phi by dt is equal to omega minus 2 pi by z dz by dt so phase motion is described by this equation so d phi by dt you can simplify this further so this is vz can be written as beta into c so if you and uh, simplify the omega term so you get the phase motion as d phi by dt is equal to 2 pi c by lambda 1 minus beta now beta is less than 1 so we are talking of a non relativistic particle beta is less than 1 so this will be this will be a positive quantity so since beta is less than 1 phi increases with time so since this is a positive quantity phi increases with time which means that the particle falls further behind the initial phase on the wave so the phase will slip now it is convenient to change the uh, independent variable from time to phase now in this expression so here this equation is written in terms of time we would like to change this from time to phase okay also here we have beta gamma so we can uh, use the result that uh, derivative of uh, beta gamma is equal to gamma q d beta so substituting this in this equation we get mc gamma q db by d beta by d phi d phi by dt is equal to q e0 cos phi now in this expression we can uh, substitute d phi by dt from the above expression and uh, expressing gamma as a function of beta we get this expression so we have 1 by 1 plus beta under root of 1 minus beta square d beta by d phi is equal to q e0 lambda 2 pi m c square cos phi so we get this expression now we can integrate both sides to find dependence of phase on velocity so we want to get the dependence because now this is a non relativistic particle and as it is gaining energy what happens to the phase so we want to find a dependence of phase on velocity during the acceleration process so to carry out the integration we introduce a new variable alpha so we uh, define alpha as beta is equal to cos alpha and we use this integral and this identity so integral of d alpha by 1 plus cos alpha is equal to tan alpha by 2 and the identity that tan alpha by 2 is equal to under root of 1 minus cos alpha upon 1 plus cos alpha and cos alpha is nothing but beta so this will be under root of 1 minus beta divided by 1 plus beta so with these uh, uh, simplifications we get the final result as sin phi is equal to sin phi i plus 2 pi m c square divided by q e0 lambda and then within brackets under root of 1 minus beta i 1 plus beta i minus under root of 1 minus beta by 1 plus beta so here beta i is the initial velocity so the velocity with which you are injecting the electron into the v is equal to c lambda beta is the final velocity phi i denotes the initial phase and phi denotes the final phase so we see here that there is no oscillatory motion for uh, phase motion so there is there are no oscillations here then because of acceleration beta is greater than beta i so beta is greater than beta i the second term uh, so second term on the right so this term is positive and it increases with increasing beta so this is positive and this term increases as beta increases and therefore sin phi is greater than sin phi i so this sin phi 
is greater than the value of sin phi i. So that means the phase is increasing. So the phase becomes more positive as beta increases. Okay. So if we want the particle to approach the crest where phi is equal to 0, the particle must be injected at a negative phase. So this is the phase, this is the crest. So we see that here sin phi is, so the final phase is greater than the initial phase. So the phase is increasing. If you inject the particle with this phase, the phase as beta is increasing, the phase will gradually increase here. Now electrons are generally accelerated at the crest because they do not have the problem of phase stability. So uh, we usually for electron Linux, we operate them at phi equal to phi is, is equal to 0. So here now the phase becomes more positive as beta increases. So as velocity is increasing, the phase is becoming more velocity. So now if we want the particle to approach the crest, so if we want the particle to move uh, uh, as beta is increasing and finally approach this point here, <clears throat> the particle must be injected at a negative phase. So particle must be injected at a negative phase. So it should be injected at between minus pi by 2 and 0. So we also see that as beta approaches unity, so as beta approaches unity that means it becomes relativistic. The phase phi approaches a constant asymptotic value. So this term will go to 0. So this uh, phase will become the final phase will uh, achieve a constant asymptomatic value. So here sine at phi infinity is equal to sine phi i plus this term, this term goes to 0 because beta has now become almost equal to 1. So now the second term uh, we can define as, uh, let us write it as f, this is for beta is equal to 1. So we see that here the minimum field gives the maximum phase slip. So this is the phase slip because this is the amount by which the phase has slipped. So since this phase slip is inversely proportional to E0, so we see that the minimum field gives the maximum value of phase slip. Now suppose we choose phi i is equal to minus 90. So initial phase is equal to minus 90 or slightly more positive because here there will be no acceleration. The electric field corresponding to minus 90 is 0. So if we choose this or slightly above it, so and then we choose f is equal to 1. This corresponds to placing the asymptotic phase at the crest. So when beta will approach 1, then this phase will approach 0. Okay. So here we can calculate the value of E0 for this. So E0 is equal to this and this shows that smaller the initial velocity the larger the accelerating field must be. So if you want to approach here, smaller is the velocity with, at which you are injecting into the V is equal to C Linard. The larger accelerating field is required such that this particle reaches the crest here and uh, when beta is equal to 1. Okay, now let's see about beam bunching. So we know, we know that before acceleration in any RF uh, Linac, the input beam must be bunched and it must be bunched at the same frequency as that of the applied operating frequency of the Linac. <clears throat> so for bunching, the synchronous phase is chosen to be minus 90. So we choose the synchronous phase as equal to minus 90. So this is zero. So we have a cavity and uh, we inject the beam such that the synchronous phase is equal to minus 90. So here there is no acceleration because the field accelerating field here is 0. The phase width of the separatrix is maximum. So we have just seen that if the phase is equal to minus 90, the phase width of the separatrix is maximum extending from plus 90 to minus 270. So if you choose here, the phase width is from here to here. So it's full 360 degree. So that means when you inject the DC beam into it, the whole beam can be captured. So maximum DC beam can be captured in the bucket. 
So an RF cavity followed by a drift can be used to bunch the DC beam. So we have an RF cavity, it could be a pillbox cavity or a single cell cavity and then it is followed by a drift space. So drift space is a field free region. So let's say we have a DC beam. So, so now let's see it's extending over the full 360 degree from minus 270 to plus 90 degree. So this is a DC beam. Now we inject it into the, this DC beam is injected into the cavity. So the central part of the beam when it reaches the cavity it will see a phase of minus 90 because the synchronous phase is minus 90. So this part of the beam, the central part of the beam will see a phase of minus 90. So since here the field is zero, there is no energy gain. So these particles will move ahead with the same velocity. Now the <coughs> head of the beam, the part which is the leading part of the beam. Now this part sees a field, so it arrives earlier than the central part. So this sees a field which is lower than the uh, field seen by the uh, central part of the beam. So it sees a decelerating field. So it gets decelerated. So it will move towards the central part of the beam. Now this tail of the beam, this part of the beam sees a field. So it arrives in the cavity later than the central part of the beam. So it sees a field which is accelerating or greater than the uh, field seen by the central particle. So this part of the beam is accelerated. So as this DC beam moves into the cavity, we, the uh, head of the beam is decelerated, the tail of the beam is accelerated and the central part moves with the same velocity. So as it comes out, we see that the beam is bunched and the beam is bunched at the same frequency at which uh, which is applied into the RF cavity. So in this way beam bunching can be done and then this beam once it is bunched can be injected into the RF linac for acceleration. So finally to summarize we have seen that for electrons field errors cause a shift in final energy. So when uh, if there is a field error in the accelerating cavity and you are accelerating relativistic electrons. So the electron will still move from the center of one gap to the center of the next gap in the right time and see the correct phase. But since there is a field error, there will be a shift in the, uh, in, a, uh, in the accelerating field seen by the electron. So there will be a change in the energy, final energy of the electron. For a Linac that accelerates non-relativistic ions. The field error changes the particle uh, velocity gain. It causes a shift to a new synchronous phase. So here the synchronous phase itself changes. So you can still calculate a value of the synchronous phase which will give the same energy gain as the designed, uh, uh, as that for the designed accelerating field. Uh, so that value you can calculate, it can be calculated. The particles in the bunch oscillate about the synchronous particle. This longitudinal oscillation frequency is usually small as compared to the frequency of the RF that is used for accelerating the beam. During acceleration in a Linac, the phase amplitude decreases and the energy amplitude of the phase oscillations increases. So this is true when the rate of acceleration is small. So as the beam moves and it is getting accelerated, it moves from one point to the next, we see that the phase width shrinks and the energy width expands. So this is known as phase damping. An RF cavity followed by a drift tube can be used to bunch a DC beam. So we know that we need to put in a bunched beam for acceleration in any RF accelerator. So this bunching can be done by using an RF cavity uh, followed by a drift space. For bunching, the synchronous phase is chosen to be minus 90 degrees. So then you have the maximum uh, width of the separatrix extending to full 360 degrees and you will be able to capture maximum amount of DC beam. The maximum amount of DC beam can be bunched. So with this we complete the longitudinal dynamics of particles. In the next lecture we will uh, study about radio frequency quadrupole which is a type of linear accelerator used for accelerating low energy 